of the notion. So, uh, what I'm going to explain today is some of the dynamics of the in, in the in the aspect of meteorology and also some oceanography aspect, just to give you some information in the scientific perspective of the area of searching, because the area of searching is very dynamic and very interesting to to understand. So what we have over here is actually uh, uh, the, the chronology of, of searching area. So we started uh, firstly in the area of, of uh, South China Sea over there in the first few days and then suddenly we changed uh, course into the Andaman Sea and also uh, Straits of Malacca. Uh, after one week we understand that the flight path must have uh, gone through very far uh, into this corridor. So then we know the famous quotes of Northern Corridor and the Southern Corridor. And last night, when, when, when the Prime Minister confirmed that the last site of the MH370 is in the Southern Corridor, so it means it will be that particular area. All right? So Southern Corridor is actually part of the southern part, southernmost part of Indian Ocean, for the floating objects. All right. Uh, in terms of geography, uh, we should understand that in this particular area, we have two uh, different ocean systems. So we have one, what we call as, as Indian Oceans. In most of the uh, uh, reports in, 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 in newspaper, uh, people is referring that area as the southern part, uh, the southern of Indian Oceans. But in fact, uh, that southernmost area is actually part of the uh, southern oceans. I will explain how we differentiate between the, the, those two oceans. Uh, but that particular area that we are looking for is very inter interesting in, the, in terms of the, the dynamics of the system. Uh, you name it, uh, either it's atmosphere or, or oceans, both of it has a very distinctive uh, features that is very interesting to understand. Because these features will affect and give uh, uh, you know, challenges to the uh, operation of search and rescue. So this is a Uh, the atmospheric uh, uh, wind movement. So, if you can look at it and differentiate between uh, the equator to the 30 degrees latitude area and compare it with what we have in the Southern Oceans. So you have a very strong wind moving in the, in the Southern Ocean. But the question is why? Why you have a particular strong wind moving in that part of the, uh, the oceans? So, we will explain later on why that happens in that particular place uh, because it is actually part of the very unique system that we have in the Southern Ocean. So, there are three main challenges that I would like to uh, explain today which reflect uh, meteorology uh, aspect uh, and oceanography aspect, which is one is weather, uh, the second one is wave, and the third one is the current movement in the, in the oceans. So we, ha we get the, uh, the Australian Maritime Safety Authority saying that the area is also forecast to experience winds up to 80 km per hour, one of the strongest winds, periods of heavy rain and low clouds with a ceiling of 60 meters to 150 meters in the next few days. So this is what happened today. So uh, we, we get lots of planes coming back to Perth. Uh, so effort for search need to be stopped because of the bad weather. So this is the uh, latest image of, of the surface winds. So you, you can see there's a very strong winds at the bottom parts of this uh, Southern Ocean. Uh, one of the most important aspects or uh, important features of this ocean is what we call it as the terms of the Roaring Forties. So what is Roaring Forties? Roaring means uh, roar, like a tiger roar. So this is, this is the area of rolling 40s. It stays at the latitude of 40 degrees. So at that particular latitude of 40 degrees, you have a meeting point between warm air at the mid latitudes area, meeting with the cooler air at the, from the polar area. So that two meeting points creates a very strong pressure gradient. It's like what, like, like what we learned previously. So you have uh, warm air, you have cold, cooler air. So warm and cooler air have different pressure. So when you have a very high pressure gradient between the two, you'll get a very strong wind. So that's why in that rolling 40s area, you have a very strong wind. And strong winds create a very dynamic atmospheric system. 
So that's why you get uh, lots of unpredictable weather, strong winds, you know, lots of rains in that particular of Roaring Forties. And what happened to the wind? Wind creates waves. So this image is the image of wave height. If you can compare the Southern Ocean to the other ocean in the world, so the average wave height is very high in the, in the Southern Ocean. Why is that happens? Because of the Roaring Forties. So you get very strong winds. That strong winds, in particular, creates a very strong wind. Uh, I have uh, uh, my own experience uh, going to the Southern Ocean. So I've been to the Southern Ocean for for scientific uh, cruise in 2006 uh, down at the south part of Australia. Uh, we've been. Uh, I mean, the condition is quite quite all right. You get a clear sky, but the wave is very high. You get four to five meter wave. In the middle of the cruise, you get storms coming in, rain, uh, and sometimes you can get uh, uh, wave height up to 8 to 10 meters. So that bad how, how it can be. So that particular area of the oceans, uh, because of the roaring 40s, creates a very, very high wave. Uh, and some people, uh, and some scientists even call it as the roughest sea in the world. And then the third part comes ocean currents. So ocean current is very important for, for search and rescue because you need to know, you need to get the objects. And to find the objects, you need to know where it moves. So when you have a floating object on the surface of the oceans, you, you get uh, that floating object moving uh, according to the currents. So just imagine, in 18 days, how far could it move from the original position? So this is the current system. If you look at, uh, this is uh, Indian Ocean and Southern Ocean. So you get uh, the red is the warm water. So you get the blue and green is so slightly cooler waters. And you see a strong current movement along that uh, particular region. Okay. Why you have a very strong current in this area? And one of the reasons is because you have what we call as an Antarctic circumpolar current. So Antarctic circumpolar current is the only current in the world that moves circumnavigating the Earth. So you don't have any current system that actually moves around the Earth. So you have Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, and, and Atlantic Ocean. All of these oceans have boundaries. So they have eastern boundaries and the western boundaries. So basically you have boundaries means the land masses. In the Southern Ocean, you don't have land masses that stops this current system. So basically you have a continuous current system, one of the most dominant current system, current system in the world, moving without stops. So that also reflects on how the wave also uh, behave. So that's why, uh, one of the particular reasons why you have a very strong wave around this area because you don't get anything stops them to move around, around the earth. So if you look at these images, so this is basically the possible debris area where we are looking for the objects. So you can see the currents in the ocean doesn't move in the straight lines. So it moves in, in like uh, uh, lots of meanders, it's like snake. So if you look at over here, so looking for objects, floating objects, even though you know how, how far it moves, how, how, uh, from where to where, it still have lots of challenges in terms of you know, determining where it's worth in, uh, along, the, uh, along the oceans. But uh, after all, uh, it is a very challenging area to work with. You have very strong winds, unpredictable weather, so you have a, a very high wave. Uh, in fact, even for uh, at the normal time, you have a very high wave. So just imagine if you have a bad weather conditions. So uh, a current is very strong. So if we look at uh, from the beginning of, of the search until now, it's already 18 days. So 18 days can be uh, uh, the movement of the, the floating object could be like six or 700 meters, uh, seven, six to 700 kilometers away from the original position. So, and that makes uh, the whole system of this Southern Ocean very interesting and very unique, but at the same time, it creates a lot of challenges to the search and rescue for the MH370. All right, so that's all. Thank you very much.